Okay, welcome back to another video. Yes, this is another video of the MacBook Pro 2016, but a little bit different. Well, until the end, you'll see all the benchmark we perform here is gonna be for tree renders, for video editors, for gamers, and also for people that work uh, with code. An overview here of what I'm upgrading from my MacBook. My recent Mac that I have is a MacBook Pro 2016. Uh, it was a max out at that time version of the 15 inch. And I'm upgrading to a new version because I've been almost four years now and I think it makes sense for me to switch uh, to the new version. I'm having some problems when I was video editing, I used the machine for coding and also I, I like to run some VMs, so virtual machines on it. And this machine gets very slow because you have a quad core and just 16 gigs of RAM. So it makes a huge sense now to move to the new version of this MacBook Pro 2019 and uh, where you can get up to 64 gigs of RAM, you can have an eight core, 16 threads, and uh, of course the new graphics that everybody's talking about. The Navi GPU, 7 nanometers, 5500M. This is a new video card coming from AMD uh, for these mobile devices. And I think it's the same, it's gonna be implemented next year in 2020 for the PlayStation 4 and uh, Xbox. Of course, it's gonna be a different type of GPU, but something similar to this one. I would like to Apple to implement RTX video card at least on the uh, on the external graphic card. I know it's impossible to do at this moment on the hardware itself because it consumes too much power. Any GTX or RTX video card that it cannot be powered up by the normal uh, brick that you have for uh, 100 watts via USB-C. But I would like to have something better in terms of uh, an external graphic card. I can connect my RTX video card, and that way it will work, so I can have Nvidia support on it. Uh, usually I use all the software, I use all the operating system, I use CentOS, Ubuntu, which I love it, I, I use Windows of course, and I use macOS for my daily basis uh, computer. So I have my laptop, I go around, uh, make up my web browsing, uh, run VMs, uh, run some code on deep learning on my computer. So I will show you how it a different video sooner on how to have everything unified on your laptop so you don't have to have like three, four different computers. So you can have two or three computers at your home, like servers that you can access for your Mac. But this is a MacBook Pro 2019 review, so let's get into this. My main advice for you here is do not change your MacBook or Apple product list, any product, like an iPhone, every year. Uh, recently, what I did is I had an iPhone 8 Plus, and uh, this year I move on to the new iPhone, because I, I, I saw a good value on it. I saw a very good camera, uh, with all these new features, that deep fusion, all the things, and it makes sense for me to move, but the impact on my bank account wasn't that huge because I was uh, using the iPhone 8 Plus for two years. I don't change iPhones every year, and the same thing goes for the MacBook. MacBook is always a really good product. You get a good quality product with good uh, screen, good uh, build design, and uh, usually what we're seeing is you can change your MacBook in one time each four or five years. So that, that was the case with me. I bought it in 2016 and now it's making the sense for me to switch because usually technology change after five years, you make a big impact in technology. So now coming from four GPUs to a GPU, it makes a sense for me. Coming from the 455, I think was the video card at that time uh, to this new 5500 is a huge um, impact in performance. Uh, compared with I had it before when I was editing 4K videos, it was very slow, so that's why I'm making the switch. Also, you get the new screen, of course, it's gonna be bigger, uh, but it doesn't make a huge difference. And the main thing here is the keyboard. One thing I hated was the keyboard. I already replaced my keyboard one time because it breaks and I have to uh, buy at that time the keyboard. Then Apple released this warranty extend period that you can just take the, uh, the keyboard to the store and they replace it. Recently, Three months ago, I replaced my keyboard and not having the same problem again. So right now, for instance, so this is my old MacBook, right? And this is working perfect. But this key here with this one are not like the fusion and not press all the way in. So it's start getting the same problem again and I most probably will replace it again. That's the only issue I have with this MacBook actually, but yeah, keyboard is, is not worth it. So when I saw that Apple released a new MacBook, it was waiting in 2020, but I, 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 thought I saw the keyboard and I said, you know what? I'm gonna get into it. For the price, it's really good. Some people compare with the, some people compare the new MacBook Pro. Uh, they say it's really expensive, but if you compare all the quality build parts that you have inside, you have the latest CPU, latest video card, 64 gigs of RAM, an incredible screen, good keyboard now, and of course the four Thunderbolt 3 uh, ports on the v, on the computer and the great battery life that you get on top of that for macOS. Um, the price is not that, it'd be a huge difference. I will show you on the Razer website that you can see 
that the price difference is not a huge difference compared with the market. On the Razer side, you get a 7 GP, uh, an i7 6 core GPU compared with a MacBook uh, 9 GPU. Okay, without further ado, let's unbox the computer and see what is inside. So we can see here that on the Razer website, we have selected the top of the line 17 inch uh, laptop they have right now. And they offer with 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte PCIe, 17, the 4K is the closest screen that you can get compared with the MacBook. And the price is 3600. Still, the MacBook has 64 gigs of RAM and for me, better performance compared with this one. Okay, here we get the MacBook and the first, the first thing we're gonna compare with the 2016 15 inch MacBook Pro is the size. Size wise, it's almost the same. It's just a little bit bigger. I will say it doesn't make a huge difference. Just a couple, um, not even one inch here. And uh, yes, it's thick, but this will help to with the air cooling system. So you can see here at the back, uh, the air cooling, the exhaust here is much better than the ones we have on 2016. Okay, so the main thing is the keyboard. Let's see how they change it. So main thing is the keyboard and you can notice from here, okay, like in any, any Apple product, once you start it automatically start, you can see over here that it's already a different. We have a scissor mechanism right now here compared with butterfly and you can notice the difference. We have the different, the T now is like before, it feels, yeah, feel much better now. It's not like the old Mac in 2015. It feels like uh, the same keyboard you have on an iMac Pro on an iMac, the regular one that when you buy. Uh, from the Apple. So it's... All right, let's change it to English first so we can understand. To use English as the main language, press right. the return key. Great, so the screen, yeah, it feels bigger. Also, you can see here the thinner bezels compared with the 2016. Let me try to open both of them at the same time. So, All right, so you can see here the difference. So <laughs> the screen here, you see the thinner bezels here and at the top, compared with the 2016 or 2018 is the same. Layout on the keyboard, different changes. Uh, the trackpad is the same. The speakers, it looks the same, but they are also improve it. And the new ecosystem for microphones, they change it. They even say that you can use these microphones as a professional environment. So what I'm gonna be doing is when I'm doing video, instead of using the Yeti, I will be using uh, the new built-in microphone to see how they perform. That will be an amazing experience to have it. For the hinge here on the back is the same, I could say. And uh, you cannot see it that much because this one has a cover. But this one, yeah, it's a little bit thick compared with the other one. With at the end, of course, help with thermal trolling. At the back, under the hood, we have uh, a better thermal system for the CPU and for the GPU, which at the end will give you a uh, better performance and we can overclock, no overclock, we can clock speed the CPU a little bit more and you will get better performance on video editing, rendering, or compiling code. Okay, so we need to install a few benchmarks here on this computer. Once I finish, I will run all the benchmarks like I explained before. This is an intro video. This is like an intro video so you can uh, see the computer and the reasons why upgrading for 2016, 2018 makes sense now. So once it's finished to install all the benchmarks on this one, you can check the next video was going to be comparing this MacBook, the 2019, against the 2016. You can see the actual increase in performance as why it makes sense to upgrade after four or five years. <laughs> so if you are a gamer, a developer, or a video editor, keep tuned for this video. It will help to understand how the new MacBook can help uh, with your workflow. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see the next video, and i see you on the next one.